everyone. Welcome to our episode of 123 Wrestling right here on SRB TV. I'm Chris, and as always, joined by Mo Brothers. Hello. Nick Slade. We are here once again. This is our third time doing it. First time doing it for only one day as we're taking a look at Wrestle Kingdom's (laughs) Wrestle Kingdom 17. I mean, New Japan's Wrestle Kingdom 17, but yeah. Um, they're supposed to have a night two, folks. I'm going to just leave that in the pending for now. Sh- put that on a shelf for now, and then we'll keep an eye out. If it's nothing, if it's like what they did last year with night three, we're going to pass, you know? So, like, don't hold your breath for us doing a, the quote-unquote night two of this year. But we're going to focus on this one. We're mainly focusing on what we're calling just the one and only night of Wrestle Kingdom this year. Still, sadly, um, COVID protocols are still in, I believe, yeah, pro- COVID protocols are still in place for New Japan shows, so yeah. no vocal audios, just clapping, lots and lots of clapping. You kind of get used to it after a while, and um, even Jay White's taking advantage of it. Um, so, anyways, we're going to start off. Um, there are two pre-show matches, or kickoff matches. Uh, one exhibition match with some New Japan Strong guys from the looks of things. And, of course, the annual King of Pro Wrestling 2023 yeah. qualifier, New Japan Rambo, which this year is going to be for the KOPW belt. They fi- uh, About a month ago, they introduced a title belt for this. So, props yeah, to whoever wins it. I'm not going to do pricks. What is that? Uh, no, no, no. They're going to do like they did last year where the final four will move on to the next night, which will be New Year's Dash. Right. Okay. So, yes. yeah. So, good luck to all the people for that match. Um, but yeah, we're going to start. We have no idea who's going to be in that. <laughs> I mean, okay. Toru Yano is definitely a given. Yano's a given. Uh, Takahi's probably a given. He was, he's was. he been holding on to it all most of this year. Yeah, he was the. They, he was officially the, the official champion for 2022. But let us dive in to our first match on the card, and that is the Antonio Inoki Memorial match. As Inoki's contemporaries and students battle out in a six-man tag team action, as Yuji Nagata, Satoshi Kojima, and Togi Makabe take on Tatsumi Fujinami, Tiger Mask, and Minoru Suzuki battle the new japan dance exactly so basically like i said there this is a battle of everybody like pretty much the six guys who are still active wrestlers in new japan that were all affected by antonio noki in their career at some point well, well fujinami i wouldn't say he's active but he, he comes out once in a while yeah i mean you know what i mean not like fully retired <laughs> no, yeah. not fully retired like you could say that about uh no wait I was going to make a WWE reference, but those are f- some fucking part-timers. Um, nah, so, um, yeah, this is, should be pretty fun. Um, I guess the most recent news comes from uh, Suzuki, uh, br- uh, the, uh, breaking up Suzuki Goon. Feeling mm-hmm. it was time for everybody to... Basically, he... What's a good Suzuki move? He basically chopped them so hard out of the nest. Uh, the rest of Suzuki Goon members out of the nest saying, fuck it, it's time. <laughs> it's just yeah, time. yeah. Um, good job. it should be a fun match there's gonna be a lot it's, if it's anything like what we usually for WWE stuff like this or what we got last year for uh, Jushin's uh, farewell match um, it should just be a fun little nod um, I would say we put the younger team over but who exactly is the younger team in this I'm um, going to guess the guys on the left Okay, I'm looking at the match. Sorry, to be, to be fair, I'm looking at the match graphic, and on the left is uh, Nagata, Kojima, and Makabe. I'm gonna go with Nakabe with them because I'm pretty sure all three of those guys are baby faces, and Suzuki's a heel, but, but Tiger Mask and Fujiyami are faces. Uh, okay. you could honestly, this is a memorial match, and both sides have connections to him, so I could see either side winning. But for the yeah. sake of picking somebody, I'm gonna go with Team Nagata. Team Nagata. Yeah, I feel like Team Nagata feels like let the faces win. I mean, regardless, they're all going to do a, probably a grand bow, like a bow after the match just to honor uh, Inoki. 
And we'll probably it could be fun if there's gonna probably be a whole bunch of Anokiisms in this. Watch one of them's gonna be forced to uh do MMA in the middle of the match. <laughs> that's hey, look, that's how I that I'm so glad people online have done history lessons on Anoki's time in New Japan running it. Cause I don't even didn't even know what Anokiisms meant until like I started listening to those. He basically just made everybody learn M- actual MMA. Yeah, that was an interesting time when he was in charge of Japan in the early 2000s. Like, Bob Sapp was the champion. Yeah. Um, it was very MMA-oriented. Yeah. But honestly, it should be a hell of a match. But hmm. uh, Mo, uh, who do you got? I mean, I'm, I'm going along with you guys on that just because even though it would be cool to see a Team Tiger Mask win. Um, I just think UG and the rest of them are going to. Uh, I I don't think it's going to be definitive, more or less. But I I just I just see them winning, winning this match. If anything. Mm-hmm. Cool. Okay. And in our, I guess technically our first first. So I guess this the Toyonoki match is kind of the main event of kickoff. It's weird how they have it listed here on the New Japan website. But let's go to our second match, which is for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championships. Good lord, that's a mouthful. As we have the team, said. as we have you uh, representing United Empire catch two two, which is Francesco Akira, who did amazing in the um. Was it the G1? No, oh, in the best of Super Juniors. He did great uh, for the last one that he's had. Uh, and TJP, <laughs> who are defending <laughs> against, I swear I'll retire eventually, Leo Rush taking on uh, Yo. Uh, oh, and Yo, Yo taking on the team. So, yeah, oh. they are Rush and Yo are the actual winners of the, the Super Junior Tag Team League for 2022. Oh, don't um, get me started on that. Oh, don't get me started on who the fuck won the uh, the other, the World Tag League because I'm like, okay, we'll get um, to that. But yeah, I was like, Jesus uh, Christ, New Japan, do you have other you have other people? Also, what Ace like you had Ace Austin and Chris Bay? What the hell, dude? I don't I don't know what to tell you, man. Look, it, we there can be an hour long discussion on Gato's booking in the last few years. Um, anyways. So of course they're the seventy. I didn't know they're the seventy of tag team t- uh, champions of this tag these tag title belts. Of course, United Empire has hasn't. I wouldn't say been dominant, but they have solidified themselves as a fact uh, strong New Japan faction. Uh, definitely with great showing with TJP and Akira in the um, best of Super Juniors last summer, and especially Akira, which was my first time seeing him perform, which he did an amazing job. Um, we already know Yo's story. Uh, last year's story with him was the breakup of Rapongi. Uh, 3K was it? It's 3K, yeah, Rapongi 3K. And, um, yeah, he's been trying to break out on his own. He's had some good matches against his former tag team partner. Um, uh, what was it? Show. Thank you. <laughs> I forget <laughs> their names rhyme, but I was gonna say Ro. And I'm like, no, that's you're just thinking the acronym for Ring of Honor. <laughs> And um yeah, um Leo Rush. Well, Leo Rush has been all over the place. He's literally been a pinball machine in the world of indie wrestling. And he wound up in New Japan and is part of his team now. So yeah, you uh, know what their name, their team name is. It's Lidio. Lidio? Lidio. 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 Leo. Oh, sorry. I, I thought it was <laughs> Sorry, sorry. I just, I heard it wasn't you guys. I just like, I heard like two or three different phrases from you guys before you actually sounded it out. Um, so yes. New Japan is very notorious with just like last year, like who actually held their title belts last year. I mean, serious, like Okada technically like held his. Like, but he only had like second 24 night, hours. He just won it. Yeah. yeah. He just won it. But like, I feel a fucking loser. It's you like me- the impact wrestling, impact slash TNA wrestling equivalent of like, just, yeah, we're just going to put, we're just going to swap over now. Now's the time to swap it. Good to you. 
Like they do the mania thing of we're just gonna reset and start new stories for the rest of the year. Well, that's kind of um. All right, so the fall. So Desperado retained his junior heavyweight title last year, and the Flying Flying Tiger retained their junior tag titles last year. Mm-hmm. House of Torture retained the six man tag titles, and every other title changed hands. So my point exactly. Um. Uh, okay, so. I'm going to place a safe bet, hedge a safe bet, because I don't know how long uh, United Empire have held the, the junior tag title belts for. They um, have held them, as of this recording, 193 days. Ooh, that's past, that's past 100 days. Well, um, time for them to lose. Okay, so okay, so let's pause for a sec. Um sorry, I lost my train of thought. I yeah, message on Facebook. Um yeah, so it's past hundred day mark. There's a, there is a possibility they're gonna swap out uh the tiles here. Yeah, I don't so, know. Honestly, so yeah. Leo so, seems like a fairly slapped together tag team at the last <laughs> so, Yeah. This fairly slapped together tag team won that whole tournament. Yeah, I know. When you had, when you had, you had Ace Austin and Chris I, Bay. Like I said, Gato booking. But yeah, I'm gonna go with United Empire just based off that. It feels like they're slapped together. Um, Leo, not gonna get the hang of saying that. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go with United Empire on this one. Uh, I'm trying because you know. I know how what I would want, but I'm trying. You guys also think what Gato wants. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and uh, Leo or Chaos, so it's kind of hard to think. So Yo, of course, held this belt multiple times with Show, but Leo Rush has never held this title. Ah, I'm going to go with the United Empire. Interesting. United Empire. Okay, Mo. You gonna be well, different? <clears throat> I am because I am going with Leo. Mm, Leo. I think it would be uh I think it would be cool with uh Leo's bouncing around that he ends up landing himself on uh the t- junior heavyweight tag team title. Then he retires again. At- <laughs> then he retires. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that would be something completely different. <laughs> okay. So what is easy what's funny with this next match is easily it's not even because the competitors in it, but easily the most talked about match because of outside what's going on with this match is for the IWGP women's championship as everybody's favorite pirate princess. I don't know if she's changed, I haven't really watched her. Um, Kyrie takes on Tom, defends her title against Tom Nakano, of course, at historic crossover back in November. Kyrie became the inaugural IWGP women's champion. Uh, I guess, and oh, wait, okay, so this, okay, uh, our fact checker Nick will have to look into it. I believe this is the sec, maybe the second only ever women's match on Wrestle Kingdom card. Is that correct? No. It's the first. It might be the first one officially officially sanctioned as a New Japan match because Stardom because the Stardom has had special matches on Wrestle Kingdom before. Okay. Uh, but they were labeled as Stardom matches. Okay. And there's I mean, been they like, were on. They, they were technically on the card, though, right? Yeah, they were on the card. Yeah, that's why I'm asking. Is this the second ever Wrestle Kingdom women's match on Wrestle Kingdom card? That's not um, like a pre-show kickoff match. Hold on, let me check. See, Real that's quick. why you're a fact checker. Um, well, while spot. you're doing that, I'm going to talk about why, like I said, this is one of the more talked about matches of the card because it has been reported multiple times there that is. the woman formerly known as Sasha Banks, going by, depending on who you read online, going by M- Mercedes Monet, um, will we showing up to challenge Kyrie for the title at this okay. show? Okay, 
This is the fourth Wrestle Kingdom to have women's match on from Stardom. Okay. Uh, I, I had to see if they were pre-show or not. If, you actually, if that actually matters. Uh, first Wrestle Kingdom 14 was a pre-show. Wrestle Kingdom 15. For dark matches. Yeah, see, this is why I'm asking. Wrestle Kingdom 16. There's... Okay, so with all this being said, Kyrie okay. only... oh. Wrestle Kingdom 16 was on the main card. Okay. So, so yes, this is the second. Okay, second ever match on the re- women's match on the Wrestle Kingdom card. Um, considering how considering how soon sorry to interrupt, considering how soon you how soon she's won it. Plus the very strong rumor of um, Miss uh, former boss time herself showing up, and they're saying Naomi's going to be there, but I'm thinking she's just going to be there for like moral support for uh, Mercedes. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to give it to Kyrie. Honestly, the money, yeah. more there's a bigger money match for Kyrie versus Mercedes. Plus, you really make it stand out if you get one easily the best women's wrestlers around that has been underutilized and according to reports some people backstage thought she was why well, it wasn't underutilized i think over height i was I, I forgot they didn't see a lot of potential for her that's why they threw her what they did to her last year's rumors i i could be completely wrong but um yeah i can see like they WWE have dropped the ball. I I feel like there's no doubt in my mind Sasha's free agent A and B. There's a there's definitely a strong likelihood she'll show up at Wrestle Kingdom. Um, it would I mean of everybody to expect showing up at New Japan's biggest show of the year. If you asked me last year, I would say Sasha Banks be the last person I'd be fucking expecting to show up. And look where we are a year later now. Like, That's the fun of pro wrestling, isn't it? Like uh, she's still rumored to be um, Soraya's uh, tag team partner in the LA in that ma- LA uh, match uh, a couple weeks at uh, Dynamite. She's still rumored to be the tag partner, though. There's been speculation that says otherwise, but yeah. So I'm gonna go. Yeah, Kyrie retains because if the rumors are true, Mer- Mercedes versus Kyrie, two former. WWE women's competitors duking out on a New Japan stage. Oh, you know, New Japan's going to just bask in that glory. Keefley pun intended. <laughs> um, do you guys have anything else to say about this? Any thoughts? Who you think going to win? Uh, this is Kyrie's first defense. She's going to retain. And if that rumor is true, then of course they're going to want Kyrie to be the one to face Sasha Banks. Yes. One of Smarker, Smarker, Smarker. Yeah, Gato Smark. Uh, one smarker. of the smarter booking decisions by Gato is like setting up Kyrie Mercedes. Uh, mm-hmm. Mo, do you have any other thoughts about who will win, who will show up, things like that? I don't like to speculate on people making appearances or anything okay. like that. I'd rather. No respect. Just... You have brought that up before. Um, but I, it'd be. I think it's going to be great to see Kyrie uh, get another person that. Um, I mean, I saw Leo you can Rush say do some stuff on, You can say no, underutilized I'm, in WWE. I'm not not repeating any phrases or stuff. It's just it's uh, it's great to see like Leo bounced around, left AEW was the most recent, and I know that he was in uh, WWE for a time and now he has a championship match in new japan Kyrie hadn't seen her for a while and i think she was like a japanese ambassador for wwe for a bit there was some i think there was something like that going on for her yeah but seeing her now active and wrestling again on the tokyo dome stage for the championship uh, i think it's going to be great and i also think she's going to win so that's all I have to say. Oh, I got to probably my former WWE guys. I have to real like, did you hear Nick that I think uh indie promotion is doing Jonathan Gresham versus Kushida? Mm. 
Dude, I, I, I got to look it up. I forgot. It's, it's a promotion. Honestly, I'm before, seeing a, but... a lot more and more lately that these, some of these indie promotions, some like, I barely ever hear about, are getting these really big matches. Yeah, and Gresham, it's interesting. It's going to be basically Impact versus New Japan in that match because Jonathan, because Gresham just currently signed with Impact. And yes. He's currently signed with New Japan. Interesting. Which oh, that, sorry. That, but, that match can also have an impact because Kushida has made appearances before. Yeah. But I think, honestly, regardless of the, you know, former Sasha rumors, I think it should be a good match. Um, I've heard of Tom Nakano before. And of course, obviously, I've seen Kyrie, so I have heard Tom Nakano before, and I heard she's a good competitor. So I think it's going to be good. We yeah, Tom Nakano, former three time artist of Stardom champion. Which is their six person, six woman tag belt, okay. as well as a former Wonder of Stardom Championship, which I, is uh, basically basically their Intercontinental title. You know what? That's what I love about Stardom. They don't just call their championships championships. They call them like they're like a weapon in an RPG or something. <laughs> yes, their world so, title. It's not just sword. It's the grandiose weapon of destruction. It's yeah, their like, world title is called World of Stardom. They're Mid card titles called Wonder of Stardom. <laughs> Their tag title is Goddess of Stardom. Their six woman tag. Wait, wait, no, no, wait, wait. Their tag titles are called Goddess of Star. Should be Goddesses of Stardom. Goddess, goddesses, uh, whatever. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I know. Six person, six person is the artist of Stardom, and uh, their developmental, well, basically rookie titles called Future of Stardom. They also have two other belts. Um, the a high it was called the High Speed Championship, which used to be a belt for Neo Japan Ladies Pro Wrestling, but got picked up by Stardom's now defended there. It's basically their high flying belt, and the SWA World Championship, which is basically their international belt. Like I said, they have and they have, oh, when they got, they're about to introduce a new belt it's called the New Blood Tag Team Championship because they have these shows called New Blood. So a workforce uh, new, belt. Uh, no, it's it's going to be like the future stardom belts for their younger competitors. It's going to and they, they have these shows. Yeah, rookie yeah. like a rookie workhorse belt. Yeah, so it's, it's going to be a New Blood Tag Team titles because they have these shows called New Blood Premium where they have so, yeah younger people on them. So it's like so it's their equivalent of the NXT North American Championship. <laughs> Oh, That's what it sounds champ- like. It's the NXT Tag Team Championship. It's a tag belt. What North? Oh, I see what you mean. Okay, okay. So in our third match, uh, well, in our next match on the card is for the IWGP Tag Team Championships as FTR, of course, Dax Harwood, Cash Wheeler take on Bishamon, which of course makes up of Hiroki Goto and Yoshihashi, who are the World Tag Leaders for 2022. Again. Uh, okay. I have someone against... tell Gato that he has other people on his roster. I, I'm going to be honest. Suspects. I have nothing against either these two men. I think Yoshihashi is always the best under one of the best underdogs of every G1 for the last few years. And Hiroki Go is just fucking amazing. Yeah, and apparently, th- according to um, uh, Kevin Kelly, um, his Hiroki Goto's daughter wants Hiroki to be eventually become IWGP World Champion. <laughs> Um, like I like these two, don't get me wrong. It's just that you know, you have other tag teams out there, dude. We're well, gonna get more into that when we talk about the main event because I already you know who's probably gonna win the main event. Um, but yeah, what do you say, man? The FTR, is FTR? Gonna win. no, uh, well, we'll talk about that in a sec. But I'll FTR has right. had easily one of the best 2022s in professional wrestling for a tag team. They have had standout matches against standout matches against standout matches, like World Quest Two, their trilogy with the Briscoes. They had a great match on TV with the Young Bucks this year. Even Dax Harwood has branched out and done some really good matches, singles matches as well. And I wish I could say things are all peachy keen in the land of AEW for them, but they're not. Um, Tony Khan seems to have forgotten he has one of the best tag teams in the world in his roster. And they have gone on to hold a lot of belts. Um, do you want to talk about how stu- ridiculous the AAA tag one was? Um, oh, yeah. So at, triple, so at the Triple Mania event, so unfortunately they had all the gold to begin with. Pretty much they had all the gold about 
after he won Forbidden Door. They had the AAA tag titles. They had the IWGP heavyweight titles, which they won off of um, United Empire. Then they got the Reno Otter titles, uh, which they won off the Briscoes at Supercard of Honor. Um, yeah, they held a lot of fucking belts. Yeah, and then they slowly three, yeah. started losing them. So, yeah. um, they, and there's possible a couple reasons why. They lost uh, the, the AAA ones. They lost the Ring of Honor one back to the Briscoes at Final Battle. They lost uh, the AAA ones to release to go and Dragon Lee. Only for him to be vacated after Dragon Lee announces he's going to NXT. Immediately vacated. I would like drop him the next night or something. I was like, oh, come on. That's what I would. Do. And, I mean, why they lost, and they lost to the gun club. And yeah. they lost to the gun club. They lost to the, oh, no, call them by the correct name. They all the ass boys. Yeah, they lost to the ass boys. And out of here. Look, I get that they're supposed to be on this story driven losing streak. But it's Bishamon, man. Like, no offense to them, but it's like you said, Gato, come on, man. Like, FTR are, like, the biggest tag team, one of the biggest tag teams in the world. Like, well, there's a reason them are, and the Usos are, like, the, there were a lot of people named them, like, the top two tag teams of the year. Like, Usos just for their main performances, but for their story stuff with the Bloodline, and FTR just for being fucking amazing in the ring. Like, and well, you're personally, going, you're I probably gonna have them lose the titles oh, to Bishamon. It's yeah, be probably. A match. Uh, yeah, it's good. I would have preferred if Aussie Open had won the tag league. That way, it kind of would have been a more fresh matchup. Mm-hmm. But not that this is a fresh matchup, but you know, like, like somebody getting an opportunity. But the reason I think Bishamon's going to win is I think FTR is trying to drop all their belts because their contract is coming up in March. And they've said some things that they want to take some time off from major any major promotion and maybe do some indies. Yeah, they're talking about not resigning AEW, working indies, and perhaps after going back to WWE. Possibly. Um, possibly. So but I do see. All... I do think that's why FTR is dropping all their belts right now. I don't. I'm gonna. Have to, I think FTR is gonna retain. I this. I have this feeling like. Like, if you're going to lose it to anybody, lose it to somebody from Bullet Club. Lose it to somebody from, well, I can't say Suzuki Yuna anymore. Um, have L.I. What was it? Uh, yeah, uh, Aussie uh, Open. L.I.J., Aussie Open. Have, dude, I was so excited. I was thinking, oh, if you could, oh, easy, Aussie Open, you know. They had a great match at Royal Quest, too. Do a sequel right here, right now. No, it's Bishamon. God damn it, Gano. I'm going to well, go with FTR because yeah. I don't think they're losing it here. I'm sorry. Yeah. I know. I know they're on this losing streak storyline, but I feel like one of the few belts they're going to be able to hold on to are going to be the IWGP championship belts. I feel like it, no, I just, I mean, yeah. they do have it till March. So I guess they could retain. I just think, it's a big stage, and they probably won't do the title change and, here. I, oh, 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 let's let's not forget another thing. They they can technically still go by a contract by contract basis in April when if they don't sign to AEW, which you, they yeah, go by contract uh, yeah. by contract with New Japan and still defend it. So we don't know yet. Like we already know why there has to be AEW because like right now they're not getting as much attention. Like their biggest feud going on at AEW right now is against the fucking ass boys. It should be a more more of a feud against the acclaim, but no, they're taking on Team TNA for some fucking reason. Oh god, that stuff. Uh, they don't, I they, love they don't, Karen. Don't bash Jared double not, J slap nuts. Karen Jarrett going just not having any any of the acclaims are at is amazing. Oh, speaking of yeah. Karen Jared. Uh, yeah, she she started the year by explaining why this clearing the air and the whole Kurt Angle thing on Twitter. Even though Kurt Angle had nothing to do with that claims. <laughs> but to be fair, Kurt Angle even said, told the acclaim, try something different, guys. Um, but anyways, I'm going to go with FTR here. This is not, I don't think this is their night. This is their night to lose. This is their first. Let's not forget, too. This is their first Wrestle Kingdom. This is a Wrestle Kingdom debut. I don't think it's going to, I think FTR are going to retain. Look, I would like FDR retain. And I, I appreciate like you just holding on to that hope. 
You know, I'm gonna pull him Somebody's got to. Just man. holding on to that hope. You just want it deep inside. You want it so bad. But uh, Bishamon's probably gonna win. What, do you agree with Mo? Mo I, I, I definitely think that FTR is gonna be dropping those belts, making them. You know, it's gonna be a solid effort, but it's ultimately they're gonna they're gonna lose. I don't. I think they're gonna lose, but I think they have a few more months before, before they drop those belts. Mm. I still think you hold on few... to that dream, Kristen. You hold Dude, on to I, the tie. Here's how I see it: they do one more contract with New Japan, and they drop the titles at Dominion. Dominion. I mean, there's a lot of shows between now and Dominion for New Japan. Um, to me, is another one of New Japan's big shows. I know, I know it's their second biggest show, but I can see him losing it at Dominion. At the very least, have close to a one year reign with the the, G- the IWGP tag title belts. <laughs> but well, I don't okay. think so, but we'll see. So our next match is for it's another it's uh defended for the first time ever on Wrestle Kingdom. The New Japan World TV Championship will be defended as Zack Sabre Jr. defends against Ren. No, no, Marita. no, no. This is the tournament final. It's the tournament final. Yeah, this has this is uh, the inaugural. This is for the inaugural champion. Oh, uh, sorry, I I haven't kept up for so long. I thought Z- they confirmed Zack won. No, this, <laughs> is the, this is the final for the tournament. So, um. The most unique rule for this belt is that it must be um, defended in a 15-minute one-fall match. Um, so, uh, like other TV belts. So, it is Zack Sabre Jr., the submission specialist, against the self-proclaimed son of Strong Style, Ren Narita. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, we just, because New Japan, God, they just needed another belt, didn't they? They just really needed another belt. Especially those singles belts. The fun fact too is like whoever wins this, what's weird is saying this is it will be their the that winner's first ever singles gold in New Japan. I've never realized the SJ Nev has not never won has uh, not never you know what I mean has not never won a um singles goal in New Japan. I thought he did. That I know he won true. uh the um the Japan, I mean, he won the uh, Tokyo Cup last well, last year. New Japan Cup on two occasions. Yeah, he won the New Japan Cup on separate occasions, but yeah. Uh, he, according to what I'm reading here, according to the description, this is, will be Iron Man's first New Japan branded singles championship. Yeah, it's probably because of Zack Sabre Jr. It's because he was regularly the ref pro champ, British champion, and he usually defended that on New Japan shows. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go with ZSJ on this. I feel like that um, feels like a logical choice, doesn't it? I feel like if you're gonna give gold any kind of gold to ZSJ, singles gold to ZSJ, be a first ever kind of singles gold for New Japan in New Japan. So like it give it probably gonna be a good match. I've heard Ren Narita before. It's probably gonna be a really good match, but I'm gonna give it to ZSJ. I'm also gonna go with ZSJ. I will do the same thing. Yeah, I had feel like he <laughs> I feel like he would be a inaugural TV champion maybe maybe they'll have a rematch down the line and Ren ends up coming out on top but I think right now Zack Saber would be the one to win this cool oh, he God. is Zack Saber Jr. just tap out oh man I miss having him talk about Michiogi as a hype man so in our next match is so fun. It is for the <laughs> Never Open Weight Championship as Carl Anderson, Mr. WAE, defends his uh, Never Open Weight Championship against Tama Tonga. Currently, the single, according to this, the single is being 2 0 for Anderson. So, this is basically the rubber match between these two competitors. Of course, we already know one thing I do know is um, he, uh, of course, Tama Tonga took Carl Anderson's finner to stun gun. Gun is a gun stun or stun gun? Yeah, see, I, t- I always get this wrong. Um, but yeah, this has been interesting. Let's talk about Carl Anderson for a bit. Um, set to defend it back in November. Work shoot controversy about him not being able to defend it. Then the New Japan went, nah, nah, he's still champ. 
Carl Anderson are confirming he's still going to be arrested for New Japan for the next couple months. And now we're here. I just found it. Like sometimes wrestling fans just for <laughs> it's so real to them. It's still real to them, damn it. They were giving Carl Anderson such shit. They're like, oh, how dare you disrespect New Japan and no show. And then it turned out, yeah, that was a storyline. This Gun- both companies were involved. So Gunstun is like, the name of the move. Gunstun. Okay. I was like, I remember th- I was like, there's no way. Number one, they knew ahead of time WWE to be he was signed with WWE to be. So there's no way they were just set, put themselves in a yeah. position where someone could yeah, show. He, and Carl Anderson would, would bur- not do that. Yeah, I don't think he would intentionally burn that bridge. So, and the fact that he was going on YouTube and doing promos saying how ha ha I didn't show up, it's like it's it's a work, guys. Like this is actually a case where it was a work. It's like come calm down. Okay, so but it, but it, this is an example though on how WWE to be under Triple H is changing. Because we had the case where just yesterday, as of this recording, we had Nakamura versus Great Muta and Noah. And now we're having Anderson show, wrestling in New Japan. Yes, yeah, so the list said about um, Muta's post show um, um, talk discussion, the better. Oh, Muta. You don't, you, you, you're going to be canceled, but hey, guess what? I don't think he cares. You're retiring anyway. I don't think so. he cares. He he's basically doing the Simpsons gif. The uh, when Homer's sinking the sand, he just has two middle fingers. <laughs> he's like, "Fuck y'all, I'm leaving." You can't. What are you gonna do to me? Can't guess what? I'm already retiring. You can't. Uh. So, anyways, who we got, folks? I'm just obviously gonna say Tamatonga. <laughs> um, I I think WWE only has so much like leeway on this. Before they're gonna say, dude, enough of the new Japan stuff. Um, so I'm gonna go with Tomatonga on this uh to win. To win the never way championship. Guys, what do you guys think? Who do you think is gonna win? I mean, I'm I'm going going the same route. I think Tama is gonna win. Uh I mean, I don't think this is gonna, you know, banish Anderson from New Shout Japan, out. but at least at least there won't be any concerns in the future about whether or not he can make it over to Japan and de- defend his title. Yeah. I feel like this would be a a good compromise. I would get I will admit at least at least I you know W this current version of WWE is nice enough to let Carl Anderson even fucking do this in the first place. Because if it if this was Vince you know that belt would have been UPS back to Japan, like as soon as he signed the fucking contract for Um now, More likely, he would have just dropped the belt um, yeah. beforehand. Uh, but yeah, wait, Nick, wait, who do you think's winning? Uh, I'm going. Obviously, I'm going with Tomatonga. Okay. You know, I like Tomatonga too. He actually got um, a really good, strong win against um, Jay White there, in the G1. I say this multiple times. There were multiple opportunities. Tomatonga should have been the leader of Bullet Club. I don't know why they never did it. Because... I was bringing this guy who just joined the group and make him the leader. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So moving on. Sorry, I don't have enough to say about that. Um, in KG Muto's last New Japan Pro Wrestling match. Hmm, I wonder if he's related to that great guy. Um, it is Keiji Muto, Hiroshi Tanahashi, and Shota and Shooter. Um, sorry, that is so much easier to say. <laughs> um, taking on Shota Umino, it's easy. Yeah, but remember, Moxley Nick Moxley nicknamed him Shooter. Shooter McGavin. No, just Shooter. Hell, in his in an open challenge, remember last year. They had a video package even having Moxley showed up and confirm it's Shooter. That was going to be challenging. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, uh, taking on LIJ, which in this case will be Naito, Sonata, and Bushi. Um, so, yeah, uh, Mudo's grand 40-year career in the world of professional wrestling is finally coming to an end. He has, um, in this recording, he apparently had a very good match against one Shinsuke Nakamura. Um which saw Nakamura, of course, winning with Kinshasa, with the Kinshasa. No, wait. No, wait. He was in Japan. He beat him with the um, 
the mist and a Um Oh no, you, you, you can't leave out the part how he got the mist. Did he make out with Muda during the match? Uh, no, he, he sucked the mist out of Muda's mouth and sprayed it in his face. So he made out with... just he, All he did was just say a different version of what I just said. Well, he didn't make out with him. He just like... Uh, but there's, anyways... There's a, there's a difference. So, okay, so if this is like... Any, if this is like last year's uh, retirement match with Juice and Thunder Liger, I feel like we know where this is going. So I'm going to go with LIJ winning this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, my guy's LIJ for life. I got to stick with my boys on this one. Hey, LIJ. My boy, Son- my boy Sonata's on this team. Of course he's going to fucking win. Yeah. I mean, that's LIJ, cool. come on. So I go LIJ. Um, what do you guys think? Well, L-I-J, Nick, baby. Nick's going with L-I-J. I'm, you know, going to be different. And, I mean, you have Keiji Mujo and Tanahashi and Shota. Yeah, sure. I, 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 think, I think they're going to come out on top. I think it's not going to be kind of a typical passing of the torch to the other team. I think, uh, I think Mudo's team is going to tough it out and win right uh nick your thoughts did i hear it before yeah. no i've been <laughs> trying to get these he notes said down for L-I-J. Time soon. i said lij like three times <laughs> give me more reason damn it while i write these notes you never pay attention to me really matter, <laughs> um sorry i honestly i am just writing down the notes uh the timestamp notes uh yeah, okay. We'll check, we'll write this note down, Kristen. Hurt Nick's feelings. Hurt Nick's He has that okay, on got hold it. on his computer screen. <laughs> okay, so in our next match, I'll have to write this down later. Nick's Nick again. Um, this half line so, Okay, I love how they do this match graphic for a four-way match. It's literally it, for our next match. It's for the junior heavyweight championship as this makes uh it's Taiji Ishimori defending against the winner of last year's best of super juniors, Hiro Takahashi, uh defending against El, Des- El Desperado, who is the runner up of last year's fucking best of super junior, and then Master Wado because Master Wado reasons. Seriously, Gato's booking is ridiculous. How is this a four-way when it should just be Takahashi, the winner of uh, of, la- of this past uh, Best of Super Juniors, taking out Ishimori? How did Despera- Desperado got runner up? What got runner-, runner up? What the fuck is Master Wado doing here? Being awesome, that's what he's doing. No, but the, the all, joke, no, to. all jokes aside, unfortunately, Kushida was supposed to be a fourth person in this match, but he caught the, a case of the sickness. Um, case of the down. what? Got, he got a case of the sickness. Don't get down with the sickness. Um, oh, he got sick with the uh, unspecified virus of unknown origin? Um, No, I believe this has been that illness that's been plaguing him for the last few months now. Um, but no, that's why Master Watto is here. I'm not, I'm joking on Watto, but seriously, though, why the fuck is Desperado in this match? You got fucking runner up in best of super. It should be hey, a great hey, match. Hey. The last, I remember, the, I think the first Russell Kingdom match we reacted to, it was, or I saw one of those two, it was a multi man for the junior heavyweight championship, and it was really good. So I'm oh, expecting the same fucking thing here, honestly. Like, like you're saying about the same people getting title opportunities. Did you really want to see Taka Ishimori as another singles match for the title of Wrestle Kingdom? I want Desperado. Let's be fair. I want Desperado to win the best of Super Juniors. That well, was Desperado may win the title. Who knows? Well, speaking of that, we're going to talk about who I think is going to win. And yeah. that's probably going to be Takahashi. <laughs> this, dude, this dude has the weirdest trend of winning a title and then having to vacate because he gets a boo boo. I'm starting to make it sound like that. For the last couple years, am I wrong? He wins it, 
wins it at some major event, loses it, gets vacated. He wins at best of Super Junior and gets right back to square one at the next Wrestle, following Wrestle Kingdom. Uh, like, I, f- I was going to go with the, what feels like clockwork. It only going- happened twice. I'm just going to go with Takahashi because third time's a fucking charm with Gato. <laughs> Come on. He's a four-time champion and it only happened twice. <laughs> so- <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, man. I just... I don't, I don't get it either. First man. time he hurt his neck. Second time, he uh, hurt his peck. Yes. We, okay, bet. What part is he, he hurt his neck? Hurt and he hurt time? his peck. It's probably gonna hurt, man. It it should rhyme, but there's nothing else in the in a body that will rhyme with peck and neck. No, I can't think of anything. So I'm just gonna say he breaks his toe. Why are you wishing for him to break his toe? What kind of monster are I you? I feel yeah, like that's I'm not, the tradition. I'm not taking any bets on this person being injured here. Yeah, so. what's wrong with you, Kristen? What? <laughs> what? He's going to break something. I'm going to toe. It's, you know what, Nick? He's going to go to... We're going to find out he's not going to be able to make it to this recording because he's going to be in Japan, and he's going to come out with a bat or something like that and just take and out And he's going to break his toe, isn't he? It's like, I got it, guys. I broke his toe. Just stare right into the camera and go, one, two, three, wrestling. Two reaction bros. Watch it. You're going to walk out. You're going to be. <laughs> it's because he likes cats, from isn't Japan. it? You are going to be banned from Japan. But I'm going to go with Takahashi. <laughs> I'm going to go with Takahashi. Who do you guys got? Oh, I'm kind of torn between two people. I want Des- Takahashi. Honestly, I do want Desperado. I would, if I had a really heart by heart, Desperado, but I think it's Takahashi. On one hand, I want Takahashi because Lij, baby. On the other hand, I like Master Wado's the only one of the four to never have to get him get a run with the belt, and I think he'd be pretty good with it. Mm-hmm. God damn it, man! I'm gonna Please. go with Takahashi, but I wouldn't mm-hmm. mind watching one. I do. Okay. I don't get why you're saying Wado. I feel like I like if it was Kushida there, I would have said Kushida. But no, I'm saying Wato is because he's the only one who's never gotten a run. I said I wouldn't mind if he won. My choice oh, is so Takahashi. You Your choice is Takahashi. Mo, do you want to listen to what I'm saying to you? Mo, do you got somebody different? I do. I'm going with El Desperado. Cool. I I I would love for Desperado to win it. It would be so fucking ironic. He lost the best of Super Junior and it goes on to win the title at Wrestle Kingdom over Takahashi, the winner of best of Super Junior. Feels like there's some point. Well, he was the guy. He was the guy who Ishimori won it from. So this would be his third reign if he won. And I, I, that's the main reason I want this. I would want this for to win just to have it be really funny irony. Given what what happened this past summer at the best of Super Junior, yeah, we got Taka, Takahashi is a four time champion. Desperado is two time champion. Ishimori is currently in his third reign. Yeah, that would be a nice surprise. I honestly think this probably would have been Kushida winning. Like he or Kushida has already said he ain't going anywhere anytime soon in his world professional wrestling. To be it's fair, that was before Vince McMahon stepped down. I, I say that knowing that, but still, I would have said Kushio probably win this if he was still a part of this match. I would hope, because this is the reason Kushio left New Japan in the first place, is because he wanted to be a heavyweight and be turned heel, and they wouldn't let him. Mm. Uh, I mean, match? Oh, go on. Like, does Kushio really want to go back and pull a belt? He's already held six times. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so... It's better than losing, I guess, to rookies on NXT level up. Yeah, true. Um, no, I said what was weird about the match card graphic is they don't do it like, like, like WWE does it where it's just four guys center and the logo's in the middle of all four guys. No, it's just Ishimori logo, the three guys that are taking him on, which is nice. I get why they did it like that, but so you used to the WWE. Yeah, I just feel it's so different compared to the WWE, uh, way of match card graphics. Um, but yeah. And in ooh 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 this this Our what semi I think, event. what I think's gonna which is oh wait hold on a sec 
just like Sonic brought to you by a bunch of Raw matches, this one is brought to us by the Life Enjoyment and Convenience Company. I swear to God, that's what it says on the Japan uh, website. Stop giving sponsors free advertising on our show without paying us. What is sure to be one of the first contenders for match of the year. What match am I talking about? Well, you're talking, of course, about Osprey Omega. Hell yeah. In our penultimate match on the card, it is the IWGP United States champion, Mr. Melter gives me all the stars. Will Osprey taking on Kenny. Well, Melter used to also give me all the stars. Omega. Used <laughs> you used to. Thank he's, you for catching on to that. He's not daddy's favorite anymore. So back in on a November 20th show where Will Osprey, of course, retained his title against Naito. Um, he called out that he was the best. No, we can beat him. Then I'll pop Kenny Omega for video package saying, I'm coming back because you're not really helping New Japan all that much. <laughs> He's like, I love New Japan in your hands. And, and you, you know dropped the ball. And you know what's great? This has been building up since the build up to Forbidden Door. Uh, so it's around, uh, no, build up to All Out, where like they've been trash talking each other for a few months during the Trios title tournament. Mm-hmm. Like heavy back talking each other. Like it's been so fun to listen to because they both make valid points. <laughs> They both make very valid points about each other. So the cleaner is coming back in his first Wrestle Kingdom match in, I'm going to guess, I'm going to guess, let's see if I'm right, Nick, since 14. Am I right? You're off by by one year, 13. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Yeah, his last, it's been four years. Since Kenny Omega's last Wrestle Kingdom match, this is we his first um first time going for the United States. Oh no, for yeah, first time in a quite a long time going for his for the United States Championship as he was the inaugural first. Thank you, inaugural. That's what I was gonna say. Uh, uh, I was just Nick's catching me on that. Thank you. Um, as he was the inaugural IWHP United States Champion. So he even has some backstory to the United States Championship belt, which mm-hmm. Juice Robinson held on to for quite a fucking while, even though he technically wasn't champion. Yeah, remember when they were going to have like the Young Bucks, Key Omega helped them spread to America, and then they were like, see ya, we're, we're making all league wrestling. At least, it, at least it wasn't like what happened between um, Best Friends and um, New Japan, where they had a vo- verbal agreement, and they went, mm, you know, we're going to go to this AEW thing instead. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like, I think the company that got hurt most by creating AEW was Ring of Honor. Because <laughs> Ring not of Honor, anymore. Built, not anymore. I mean, they because the biggest problem with Ring of Honor time is they had built too much the company around the Bullet Club, and then they left. <laughs> then they so, didn't have anybody. <laughs> so currently, um, Omega has one win in a rivalry against Omega right now. It's one and zero between the two in this Ooh. current feud. Um. Going off Osprey for two obvious reasons. One, no, one obvious reason. That's well, the next week the the elite are going for the trios titles in the final match in the best of seven series, which apparently Melter is called the best best of seven series in all pro wrestling. Which I can't not argue with him. Because I haven't been bored by any of the... Can't the, the, not. Can't not be... Ah, oh, you're going to... I love my phrasing. Wait, can't wait. not disagree with him because, like, each match has been enjoyable to watch. So, they have somehow managed to mix things up. But because of that match, I'm going to say Kenny does not win here. I say Will Ospreay retains. So what's going to air... Like, they're both Dynamite and Wrestle Kingdom on the 4th. I know time differences, but no, what's no, no. going to be the, on the 1st? Um, no, Kenny's coming back next week for the for the, the final match in the best of seven. Oh, so it's not going to be this Wednesday, but next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, yeah. So this oh, Wednesday, I was kind of hoping that in... Osprey would come in and cost him the series. But no. Dude, that, you do realize how pro wrestling works, right? That could still happen. That could still happen. He could still cost the elite. 
Because honestly, I want the fucking um, House of Black to win the trios titles. Um, but anyways, Osprey to retain. What do you guys think? Oh, it's kind of hard because one, Osprey is a, a New Japan full timer. On the other, would New Japan really turn down having Omega for multiple matches? It's kind of hard to say. New Japan loves Kenny. They do love Kenny. Sorry, let me phrase part, it. Gato me, loves Gato loves Kenny. Because part of me thinks maybe Omega can win and then drop it to Osprey in a rematch. But then part of me thinks like no, the Osprey can just win here. So I'm kind of torn on this one. Oh, I'm going to go with Omega. Okay. Omega. Okay, Omega wins it, making the the feud two and zero. Oh. Mo, your thoughts? What do you think? I, Who's gonna win? I I think Osprey's gonna win. I I, I feel like maybe there's a. Uh, there's more things for there's a lot Omega is doing and can be doing. And, uh, you know, this is more for probably nostalgia purposes, if anything, not, um, not really expecting them to have a U.S. heavyweight title run, but am expecting a pretty damn good match. Oh yeah. It's going to be great. Honestly, I can see that because especially if the Omega and the Bucks win, the rumors of who they may be facing next will keep them busy for a while. And in our main event, I feel like I should be more excited for this, and I'm just not because Gato. I'm just um, not. <laughs> I'm just not. <laughs> that's why I said I'm looking so forward to the United States Championship match because we they've actually un. And like under the radar, been building up Osprey Omega f- to be happy at, in January, and it's, oh my god, it's gonna be great! But uh, our main event, sorry, let me get more at to in our main event of the evening. How was that? No, oh, nothing. Okay, no. so we have the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion Jay White. Um, the fifth, the, the fifth champion of that uh, illustrious title. Um, Nick agrees with me. Uh, defending against the winner of the recent G1 climax, Kazushika. Um, you know the guy who's won it like a billion yeah. times. Kazushika. Um, Ugh, it's one of those. I, you want like- you want to know how long this feud's been going? The singles right worker right now is four one. For White, for Jay White. Jay White has won 40s. So I can already fucking tell you who's going to win this. Yeah. It's going to be Okada. Could you? I mean, I, I'd i be surprised if Okada won. But Would you really? I mean, really? I do really? have some thoughts. Really? Like, I mean, it'd be crazy if he, if he won it again. Again. At Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah. So yeah, Okada never wins night. in the main event of Wrestle So Kingdom. for those who haven't seen our doesn't. best of yet, doesn't. Mo, Mr. Mo Brothers put both Okada matches into one of his freaking picks. Yeah, he cheated. For, I... for both his Wrestle Kingdom 16 <laughs> matches. To be last fair, year. Kristen, you were going to cheat too by putting three matches in one. To be fair, it was FTR to Briscoe's, fair. a match that hasn't really happened, that, that like all happened in one year. Okada yeah, you just has been one inventing Wrestle Kingdom after Wrestle Kingdom after Wrestle Kingdom. Am I not wrong? Oh my god. One, two. Should I count him? Okay, I'm trying to see how many Wrestle Kingdoms Okada's made evented. Should I count separate nights as separate main events? No, don't. Just, I mean, yeah, sh- you know what I mean. Just, no, 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 I don't know what you mean. He said yes and no at the same time. <laughs> he can't them. not make up just, his mind. Just count how many. Just count All how right. many. I'm gonna count night three from last year. We know I don't technically count it. it. Just makes it easier. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, eleven. Eleven. 
Okay, now look up online how many WrestleManias Hulk Hogan made events in. Oh, probably. I can't remember how many. That's why I said look it up because you probably can't think of it. Yeah, you can look up Roman Reigns. He's getting up there. We look at Roman Reigns and Hulk Hogan. What the fuck? Why not? All right. Because right. it's what else it's can me- you say about this match? He Jay White's the biggest heel New Japan got. Okada's the biggest pa- baby two, face they three, got. He won a G one. He was supposed to freaking win. Five, was six, kind of going seven. for Osprey in this situation, you know. Fuck man. Hulk Hogan main evented seven WrestleManias. Okay. And Roman one, two, three, four. <laughs> five. He's main evented five. No, six. Wow. Sorry, six. He's made him into six. Seven. Okay. Okay. And so God's that sake, should he, show he, you. He, was, he wrestled me four in a row at one point. That should show you where intentionally or not intentionally, even Vince McMahon realized we need to move on from Hulk Hogan. Gato has not fucking realized that in the last 11 fucking Wrestle Kingdom main events. Uh, to be fair, like um, last year, count this three. Because he made it all three nights. I have been thinking it ha- why Okada hasn't burnt me out compared to Charlotte Flair burning me out. It's because Okada's that fucking good. This, we no, just have no, to no, say no. that. And I, I know why. I know why. I, you know, I'm, I am getting close to being burnt out by Okada. I'm going to be honest. The guy dude's like one of the best wrestlers of all time. I'm going to give him that. I have never not, not been mm-hmm. never yeah, not never been not- bored. Never not been bored with a, with a majority of Okada's matches. Even his match against Jonah in the G1 was very entertaining. Mainly because Jonah squashed Okada like a literal pancake. And actually won. Um, that was the only time where I felt like the, he actually legitimately put somebody over in, in the times I've been watching him. And how did that work out for them? Well, Jonah forever say he has a clean win over Okada. Now our wrestler can say that. And now he's in WWE as the Mrs. Bodyguard. We don't know that yet. Like how we haven't I haven't even watched like as we're recording this, Raw's just started. So like and there was a digital exclusive saying Jonah was only doing was, was paid by Miz. So we, I don't think it's like a he like working for Miz. He just got he bounty hunted for him. I don't know. Mur- murked him. I don't know. Um Okada. Yeah, Okada's gonna win. Ugh. It's just like, yeah, like you said, Okada's great. But for God's sake, you have other people on your roster. <laughs> it's like, That's why I was going for Osprey. Make Osprey your top guy. Like you did I mean, that for a bit in the middle. Until of he work. got hurt. It's like, uh, looks like I got Okada and Okada. Okay, let's uh, let's make this match happen. <laughs> yeah, Okada, Okada, and. Who's Osprey? No, Okada. No, it just says Okada again for the third time. Well, um, honestly, I like Okada more than White. And I do, but you know what? Props to Jay White. He's keeping fucking. He's the main reason Bullet Club's still fucking relevant. Yeah, he's yeah, he's the only reason why it's relevant. Yeah, and I like Jay White. He's a good fucking heel. Like a really good fuck, and sometimes a really fun heel. Like in the G one where he had to take on um. Uh, Chase Owens, and he's supposed to have paid him to take a fall on the match. Turns out he heavily shorted him, <laughs> and so the inter- the first part of the match is just Chase just getting in 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 Jay White's grill about this shit. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> you shorted me. <laughs> and like I said earlier about them not not car not being able to like ch- verbally cheer. I love how he me- messes with the crowd. Oh, oh, you're gonna chant. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Like I said, Jay White's really good. I'm just tired of seeing this rivalry and Okada in Wrestle Kingdom main event. Uh, yeah, Okada. Well, how do you think I feel as a Naito fan? That Gato apparently has something against Naito. I don't care. Uh, you got Okada, Nick? Yeah, yeah. I just hope first Okada loses it next to somebody more fresh. Sonata! Oh, Mo, Okada yeah. Jr. 
Okada Jr. <laughs> he can't name, change the name of somebody to um, Okada Jr. I wouldn't mind Sonata getting a title run. I'll, Hell yeah. I, I'd like to see Ishii get a title run. I want to see... Minoru Suzuki said he's not going to retire until he gets that belt. Mo? Did you say Okada or are you just... I, I was... Sticking with my choice of Okada. Oh, oh, you're making uh, fun. Okay, earlier you're just making. I know you're just making fun. Gato there. I didn't think you were just going, huh? <laughs> Okada, Okada, or Okada. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, Okada. I just. I don't know. I don't know what man. Not too long ago, New Japan was like the best thing going. Don't and look I, this up, Nick. I wonder how close this Okada Dre White's rivalry is going close, going to get close to the never-ending feud that is Cena or in. Don't look it up now. I just uh, bang my fair, head. Tanahashi and Okada fought a lot. Uh, I don't I, know. I, I feel like the pandemic really hurt New Japan. Like it really is hurt. it sad. I want to mind Tanahashi replacing Okada. I know he's the he's the like veteran like workhorse of new japan now but like i think it would just make this match hella more entertaining you know what's hella offensive right now the fact that you said that anyone was replacing okada i need you to just end that thought right now and just keep okada in your head constantly the sound of rain the sound of money crashing down on you you peasants for doubting and getting tired of Okada. I I get goosebumps every single time. So we're going to be moving on to uh, best match of the night. What do you guys think the best match of the night is going to be? I already obviously said mine. I think it's going to be the United States Championship match. Did I-, I think it's going to be that. Honestly, if it's not that, it's going to be the, uh, G- the four-way for the junior heavyweight title. It's probably going to be Osprey Omega. Osprey Omega? Mo? Um, I think it's gonna be Okada versus White. So Mo's never gonna be part of this group anymore. I'm just gonna remove <laughs> him from the Zoom call now. It I I feel like it might end up just being the um Mudo's last match. Really? Mudo's last match, okay. No, no, that's fair. No, that's a good that's honestly a good choice. You're gonna get a lot of fun stuff in that match. Especially with Lij the way they act during some of these more fun yeah. matches, put it up for Lij. Yeah, I don't see you putting it up. Hmm. Hmm. What? Nothing. Nothing, Mo. We love you, bro. Oh. Um. Okada. Yes. Okada. Yes. Okada. Yes. Okada. Yes, Okada. Okada. So that's going to do it, folks, for our predictions special for Wrestle Kingdom 17. So as always, folks, um, if you're new to the channel. I always mess this up <laughs> when I'm doing this solo. There's always a chance of me messing this up. So other than that, if you're new to the channel, you can hit the like button. If you want to talk to us more about stuff like this, comment down below. If you want to share us around, share it around. And if you like us just a little bit more than anybody else when it comes to talking about some new Japan pro wrestling, hit the subscribe button down below. Hit that bell icon as well. What are your predictions for new Japan pro wrestling for Wrestle Kingdom 17 in Tokyo Dome? Uh, what do you think is going to be your standout match of the night? What do you think is going to be your favorite moment of the night? What are your thoughts about the potential of the formerly known as Sasha Banks showing up in this uh, at this card? Let us know in the comments down below. Put down and off our reactions overall. Most importantly, we thank you for watching and letting us prove that Okada is this close to being overrated. <laughs> so, guys, where can we find you? Somewhere on the internet. Oh, you know... Just check out forgeeksing.com. Check out all my past articles and reviews. Also, check out my social medias. Right now, my main website is down for the foreseeable future. So check out my social. You can keep up on the socials, on the Facebooks, the Twitters, the Instagrams. You know that stuff. Go for it. Now, Mo. Honeygram? Okay, Zero? Mm-hmm. What can Honeygram find you, Mo? Oops. You both are saying stuff at the same time. Uh, Go on, Nick. No, I'll say Mo, where can they find you on the wide web? Yeah. Um, well, um, you know, the way that you can find me is Okay, here goes you're, new method. you're walking in the woods. Uh-huh. There's no one around. Yeah. And your phone is dead. Oh, Out of no. the corner of your eye, you spot yeah. me. 
Afro Mobro. Like Slenderman? No, not like Slenderman. We're not trying to get sued here. Afro Man. Uh, For <laughs> not shame. trying to get sued here. For shame. <laughs> um, but Afro Mobro, uh, Instagram, music streaming services, various places on the internet. You may see me just uh, strolling around, wondering what's going on. Just, uh, just say hey. Uh, I'll probably awkwardly say hey back, and then, you know, we'll see where it goes. Climb up a tree and go hang out with the squirrels. Exactly. Um, and like I said, I did that during this prediction special. If you haven't yet checked out, check out. I believe, it should be going up soon. I will have to keep an eye on this. But you have to keep an eye out for our best of 2022 special. For myself, I mean, Mo Brothers, and Nick have a near three hour discussion. Three hours. <laughs> uh, a three hour discussion on what happened in the land of pro wrestling in the year of 2022. Hey, the fact we're talking about years worth of stuff, and we, there's only three I, hours. I already said what one of our picks is, but yeah. watch that video if you haven't yet, and you'll get to see a couple surprises from us, including especially one from me that you will not forget. And it's an interesting uh, YouTube clip that uh, Mo requested that my brother add to the video. You're just going to just throw that out there. Okay. What? No, I, I didn't say what it was. Just stay tuned for that video. Or if this comes out, does come out after, watch the video if you haven't yet. If you have watched it, you'll know exactly what I mean. Um, yeah. And we'll have Wrestle Kingdom 17 reactions up as soon as possible. Yeah. We are not going to be staying up until the crack of fucking dawn to watch it live. We will be watching the VOD version once it comes out on New Japan World. Because I pay currently, with a little help from Nick and Mo once in a while, roughly seven to eight bucks a month for it. Because I guess our money in their world, in their country has dropped. So now I'm only roughly paying seven to eight bucks a month for New Japan Yay! World. Yay! Which is actually, again. which is theoretically a much better deal than the WWE, uh, uh, the, the Peacock. Um, what are you yeah. talking Sorry. about? Woo. It's only, Sorry, came out of nowhere. It's only four ninety nine to get ads that show get up ads. once in a while in your video. <laughs> Here's so look forward to that. Ads. And like I said, folks, Japan, I'm um, doing Japan, January is really packed for us. Yeah. We got Wrestle Kingdom 17. We got Hard to Kill. We got maybe Wrestle Kingdom 17. 19. The Rumble that is Royal. Um, we got the Royal Rumble, uh, of course. That's going to be hella fun because we're going to have some fun with that one, which we'll get to when we get to predictions for that in a couple weeks. Um, yeah, January's packed to the brim with stuff. Have you seen the Hard to Kill poster, Nick? It is yes, stupid. I have. It is so fucking stupid. Yeah, yeah but you love it, don't you? It's stupid. <laughs> but you Mo love it. is literally Bully Ray literally towering over Josh Alexander. That's the poster. Hey, I mean, Bully Ray is probably going to beat up some somebody's kid. Not because Bully Ray probably doesn't give a fuck about somebody's not, family. Uh, then not we think we know Bully Ray definitely family. doesn't give a fuck about your family. He doesn't give a fuck about Tommy Dreamer after Wife was happy on been happy on Impact. <laughs> but Tommy guys, Dreamer's like, I defended you guys. You are getting sidetracked here because we're talking about New Japan. Yeah. Yeah, so until next time, I'm Kristen. I'm Nick Slade. I'm Mo. And that has been a very New Japan prediction filled episode of at one, two, three wrestling. So we will see you guys later. Okada. Ah. Uh. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want to check out any of our previous reactions, as well as one of our other SRB shows, check out one of the playlists down below. And if you want to check us out in the social universe, you can find us on Twitter and Stardust at Super React Bros. As well as on Facebook at Super Reaction Bros.